have the book. We have the book. So I have Kareem and Kenton behind and Miriam's holding the camera. I'm trying to feel. You nervous, Boo? Of course I'm nervous. This is the paperback cup copy. And uh <laughs> it doesn't feel bad. That's the back. That's the front. <laughs> And yeah, you can see it has the not for sale on it because yes. this is a proof, yeah. right? But the final copy won't have that. Oh my goodness, a real book with pictures. <laughs> Kareem, what you think? Looks good to me. Looks good to you? Well, it was good before we sent it to the printer, so hopefully everything is still good. Um, yeah. Ken, so yeah, with this one, we had my picture on the back, but with the one from Ingram Sparks, where probably, yeah, the Ingram Sparks one will have just pictures of different mm -hmm. okay. phases of the cake in writing, so it won't have my picture. Now, where, where can they get this book from? So currently, this book is available on Amazon, and you can buy it in the paperback version, or you can buy it in uh, the Kindle e-version. And Kindle is actually widespread, or it's not just in the U.S., I believe. I think yeah, you can get it over. pretty much in most places. So this is she. <laughs> Kareem, come feel it. <laughs> it's a good quality. Right, yeah, what do you think of the quality? You do that one? Which one? Yeah, I did that one kind of, uh, l you know, I just wanted something and we sh played around with the size. So I just wanted to give, you know, the idea of a tea party or, you know, the thought of um, cupcakes. Yeah, the right, I was trying to make sure the margins were yeah, okay. So it's not like too, so too no. tight or right. too close. Well, out, yeah. Nice to see Kareem's artwork in there. I like it, how it, it balances out, you know. Do you so think the nice. font's too big or do you think it's okay? No, it's good. No, I it's, guess it's, well, it's easy to read. Yeah, it's easy, it's easy to, to read, read, especially for, eyes. for seniors, right? Right, no, it's easy on the eyes. So we're most proud of or i'm most proud of putting these qr codes in here and all you literally have to do is hover your phone let me do it again because it's so quick whoops did it you see how quick that is yeah you hover it over the qr code and automatically your smartphone will come to the video yeah, if, if you have a qr scanner but many of the newer phones have it right as part of their apps Right. If you don't, it's, you can download it for free on the Google Store. It it's so quick. Ah. Oh. That it kept pop. It pops up so quick. So. Right. Right. So yeah, automatically mm -hmm. takes you to the appropriate video. Mm -hmm. So we have an unboxing to do. These are all things related to the book, the cake book, but also related to the jewelry that I had made. Um, you know, the cake related jewelry that I made. So I want to send them as Christmas gifts kind of to mark the publishing of the book. So let's see what this is. So the first thing, and most of these were Etsy sellers. The first thing I have, ta-da, are these stickers. They're a little smaller than I thought, to be honest. But it's nice. It's like gold, gold foil. I don't know if you can see. And they have on them handmade by Habiba. 
So remember those earrings I made in a previous video? I wanted to be able to put them on some pretty packaging. So I got the plain packaging and added the gold foil label uh, or sticker that I just bought. And remember those cake earrings? <laughs> so I would just want to basically package them and make them look nice and professional. And I think they look good, right? I mean, really, they look like somebody bought them out of a store. So that's what this is. It's just a box of magnets. So these are like small magnets. So I guess this video... Oh, it's not magnets. Oh, it's not magnets. It's not magnet. I mean, it's not magnets in the way I thought. It's... It's refrigerator magnets, but it's not just blank magnets. It's got the cover of the book on it. Ta-da! That's pretty cool, right? Yeah, that was that. Um, it, they were quite expensive, but I felt like the quality was really good. That's pretty cool, right? Oh, so far, this I really love that. Wow. Oh, my God. This now, this almost looks nicer than the actual cover of the book because of the gloss. That's so cool. I totally forgot. Look at that, Kareem. That's pretty cool, right? This lady up north has like an old-fashioned, heavy-duty, like metal type machine. Mm -hmm. And she makes them. And I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, but I saw everything she made looked really cool. And so, and yeah, you can't even bend this. This is solid. So I was planning to uh, maybe give to family or as a giveaway but I didn't I didn't get many I only got a few yeah. so I'm definitely gonna Maybe keep five. one maybe give one to Nana and then we'll see thank you so much to anyone who has already ordered their copy of the Caribbean fruitcake thank you so I thought I would take you behind the scenes so you could really understand uh, what it was like for me writing this book and I just thought I would use this backdrop. This is actually a video from when I interviewed my father um, several months ago. So yeah, I was writing a book for the first time. Like many of you, I've had ideas and I still have ideas for other books, but I thought I would start with this cake book first. So there is so much to learn, so much to do. So for those who don't know, I am a US trained medical doctor, but in my pursuit of happiness, I have decided not to practice. Um, and I wish to dedicate most of my time towards some creative adventures and activities. <laughs> for those who know me, they know that I love to entertain, I love to cook, I love anything creative. I love anything that requires using my hands. I like to make pretty things. I like pretty food. I like multicultural food. And I've always enjoyed being creative. So despite spending most of my life either in training or in medical practice, I actually always considered myself an artist first. And so for me, food is like combining art with creativity and function. And I just absolutely love it. So these are some cupcakes I made a few years ago and that's a bum cake for a baby shower I made. That's a table setting last Christmas, some pretty flowers. So when did the idea for a book start? Well, you have to go back many years ago, at least 10 years. Uh, in a, around 2010, when my grandfather was still alive, he gave me the recipe for the Caribbean black cake. And back then I thought, oh, why not just make a YouTube video? So when I started doing YouTube, I actually posted a video tutorial and at the time I literally had less than 5,000 subscribers. So to have a video go up to, you know, 200,000 views was a really big deal for me. But I was also overwhelmed with the number of responses and comments. And the majority of them were positive, 
but there were a few people who had, you know, something to say about the way I did it or a suggestion or a question. There were a lot of questions and I was literally getting at one point daily emails about the recipe. People wanted a written recipe. So I ended up writing a blog post. I started a simple blog post. The, you know, it wasn't complicated, very simple. And that was that. Then a few years later, let's say this is about 2019, I thought, you know what? Why not write a book? But write an ebook. That's what I was thinking. Something quick and easy. You're going to write an ebook. So, yeah, about 2019, I was optimistic. I was thinking about 2020. I had a vision board and all of that. And, you know, just all these goals that I was going to keep, you know, including YouTube and. Well, you know what happened in 2020. It just did not go the way we planned. Literally at the start of the pandemic, we realized that we have to move. And so we had to move. Kenton's in law school. It was just a lot. And so thank God we got another place and we settled into the place, which is where we are now. And we absolutely enjoy where we are living currently. However, it just really threw everything off. And so my plans for this book just didn't happen in 2020. By the fall of 2020 or last year, once things seemed to have some sense of normalcy despite the pandemic, I started baking again and shooting. So basically the objective was to film making the recipe and also to style the food because I was doing this, you know, um, by myself with the assistance of my children at times. But the point is I didn't have a stylist to do this for me. In traditional publishing, you would have a food stylist. So anyway, I would take pictures and video at the same time. authentic because this is the authentic recipe that I made a few years ago that you guys raved about. I had so many comments, so many questions, and it is perfect for anniversaries, for any party you can think of, for New Year's, for Christmas, for weddings. Okay, so I actually had this cake for my wedding. And if you still have questions after making this cake or after watching this video, then I suggest you check the description box because at the time that this is uploaded for you, I have a recipe book ready for you. So I hope if you have any further questions, maybe you want to know how to make a vegan version of this cake. Maybe you want to know how to make a gluten-free version of this cake. Maybe you have questions about how to store this cake or what type of alcohol or liqueur to use in this cake, where to get the fruit, how to soak them, whatever your questions are that I have. That's what this is. Okay. All right. I'm going to try it for you, okay? I'm going to try the slice for you. You're going to need some cake tins. And I collect cake tins over the years because I'm always giving them away when I send them to people. You know, it's a solid one piece. And these come in handy if you're making sponge cakes also. We're going to add our spice. So just think of all the wet ingredients. That's what you're doing first. The vanilla is teaspoon. Teaspoon. A teaspoon? Of vanilla. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Say what I'm saying, Kareem. Teaspoon. I need, um, where's the whisk? Looking back now, I definitely realized I had no idea how much work it was going to be. I mean, I knew it was going to be work to write an ebook, but once I decided that I was going to write a physical book and it wasn't just going to be on Etsy, but that I wanted to sell it on Amazon, it just felt so overwhelming. 
So anyway, at some point, I did take a break from writing and filming because it was nice to kind of step back because I was also starting to have doubts that maybe it wasn't good enough and, you know, the devil works. So anyway, spring, Khalid graduates. I just finished crying, but not because anything bad is happening. I just get sometimes so emotional. I watch these stupid TikTok or IG little videos. And the last one I watched was of a um, bunch of bikers at, uh, at a stop and an old lady wants to cross and she's, you know, indecisive because she doesn't know whether to cross or not. And so they stop and they all stop. This is like a ton of them. They all stop in the road and a few of them get off the bike and they help the old lady to um, cross the road. And I was like, that is so sweet. And I just start crying. I'm a mess. <sighs> or maybe it's because... <laughs> In three weeks, I will be 51. <laughs> and sometimes I still just don't feel like I have my life together and I'm tired and I need to go to bed. But no, seriously. So um, I should be happy. And I, I mean, I am happy. Most of the time I'm happy. Y'all know that. But sometimes, honestly, I'm just like, ugh, please, God. I, I'm asking for a prayer. Please, God. I'm just hoping that my current choice to be a creative person or to harvest my creative talents will work out. Um, anyway, let me show you what I'm doing right now. So at this moment, I have three things I'm working on. So I just turned off my computer, but I was editing for a vlog tomorrow and it's for a thrifting video. So here is, um, I don't know, can you see here in my notes? So when I'm doing a video where I am intending to teach in some way or to educate, I actually have to do or make notes. And that's what I do here. And so I take it all pretty seriously. It comes off like, you know, it's just natural flowing. But sometimes the videos do actually require work. Um, require some research, require, you know, some level of thought. So anyway, y'all know I do my videos. I stand here, I edit for hours. And then the other thing I'm working on, which is exciting down here, is, uh, well, it's turned off, is my book. So I pray to God that at some point, this year, well, not this year, honestly, in the next few weeks, hopefully, in the next few weeks, this book that I've thought about for a long time, an ebook, I think it will be to start off with, a cookbook will be out. So I've been doing a lot of typing, um, learning how to use Canva. Uh, I finished on Google you know, Google Doc, and then I've had to edit it, and then I have let Mariam look at it and edit it some, and then I'm going to share it with um, a bunch of people that I will refer to as um, a launch team, and I will have them help me look at it also before I actually put it out there. So that's project number two that's been taking a lot of my time. And then I wanted to make sure that even after I've done this book, um, and obviously I still continue to do YouTube, that I will have something else to work on. And also, um, yeah, so these are notes for jewelry, <laughs> polymer clay jewelry that I am going to be working on. I've also always, you know, had all these ideas about making things and I do a lot of DIY projects, but I want something that I can monetize, right? I want to be able to monetize all of these creative talents. Everybody knows or everybody says, Abiba, you're so talented. Abiba, you're so talented. But the truth is, as talented as I am, sometimes I feel like I'm not being smart with that talent because it's not necessarily generating any money or income for me and I need to start doing that. So my goal basically is that 
I want to be able to monetize my talents. And, um, you know, if one thing the pandemic has taught us is that we need to vary our income or we need to have different forms, different platforms uh, where we uh, basically different streams of income is what I'm trying to say. I'm so tired. Different streams of income. That's what the new way of life is. You cannot rely on one singular job because you just don't know. Anyway, obviously I have the fortune of having had a medical education and I can go back and be a doctor if I choose to when I want to, but I have chosen to live or right now to work as a creative person and I just want that opportunity. I just want the opportunity to see that I can use the other side of my brain to do things that I love, that I enjoy, that still brings people joy, that makes people happy, um, you know, functional pieces that bring joy. That's all I want. <laughs> That's all I want. Um, I want to be able to see that I can actually make a decent income doing that. So that's why I'm doing all this right now. That's why I'm choosing not to practice in medicine because I've done that for most of my life. Most of my life, honestly, was spent either training or practicing. And many there were many times when I was absolutely miserable, miserable, tortured. Um, I loved, you know, taking care of people. There's just a whole side of medicine that people outside of medicine don't understand. It's not necessarily the patients, it's everything else. And uh, it was it was affecting my health. Anyway, I, I, I don't even want to go into that right now because it's just going to get me upset. But I am excited I am <laughs> underneath it all. I am excited to see this book come to life. I am excited to see my channel continue to do well. Um, so yeah, what 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 day is it today? It is July twenty fourth, two thousand twenty one. Wish me luck. Bye. So this is the fall of this year. This is a gluten free cake that I made and uh, absolutely delicious. You don't need wheat flour to make a rum cake. <laughs> I have definitely proven that. And then as you see, this is in November, I'm kind of cutting through the prunes and I really emphasize that you do that so that there's no chance of pits. One thing I wanna emphasize about the recipes in this book is that you will not find vanilla, chocolate, strawberry cake in this book. This is not a book full of different desserts. This is a book filled with different ways to make black cake. So vegan, gluten-free, alcohol-free, sugar-free variations of black cake because that's what I love. And hopefully if you love black cake too, you'll want this book. I also included a bonus recipe with bread pudding because I was using some of the same fruit. It's kind of behind the scenes, you guys, see? I got Murray. I have no choice in this. <laughs> this is the bread pudding recipe we're doing. And usually if you see me in the picture, then obviously somebody else took the picture. That's my new camera, by the way. Green Murray, what are you laughing at? Is there any picture? <laughs> Picture, picture. I hope one day soon, I'm gonna look back and go, ah, look how life got so much better. Look how you're living it up, enjoyment. <laughs> living the enjoyment life. Because you know what? Everything is work. Before you get to that enjoyment part of life, you have to work. So this is the non-glamorous side of making this cake book. And I'm gonna look back, hopefully, and go, girl, you did it. You got your fruit all together. You got your bowls all dried up for your ingredients. You set them out and you took pictures. 
So every recipe in this book, I've had to try out myself. I literally had to make sure everything works. Prior to the book, all I made was the traditional cake. But of course, now I've had to make the vegan version, the gluten-free version, the egg-free version, the alcohol-free version. So anyway, I'm a little tired right at this moment, but let's get it together. Let me show you what I have in front of me. I'm about to make a recipe or put together a recipe. Um, so it's not just, oh, you took some pretty pictures and put it in a book. No, you had to get the ingredients, assemble the ingredients, take pictures of the ingredients, videotape the, uh, putting together the ingredients, not only videotape it, go back and do a voiceover. So make a video, take the pictures, pick out the pictures, assemble them in a program, decide what pictures you're gonna use, what format you're gonna use, et cetera, et cetera. But in the kitchen, this is what we're doing. Okay. So, hopefully you can see, I got some of my ingredients here, and then I have a little kind of white background canvas that I'm gonna arrange everything and take some nice pictures. Right now, it looks pretty basic. Behind the scenes, pretty darn basic. When you put it all together, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. In this version, we're using flaxseed because we're doing it egg-free. So no eggs in this recipe. So you can use flaxseed, but also you can also use applesauce. So where's my applesauce? I need to get my applesauce. And if you don't have vegan butter, you can use a combination of oils like coconut oil. So, um, anyway, this is part of the work. And I look a hot mess. And then on top of all that, oh, we got some lights. You can't use regular, regular light. You gotta make sure you got some decent lights. So I have, these are LED lights. And I also have back here, turned backwards, a ring light. <laughs> So, yeah, when I'm working in the kitchen or about to, you know, start picking pictures, I always have my ring light as well. So which one am I going to use? Mm, this one. Hmm. You know what? Maybe I don't need that large one. This one is good enough. Most of the pictures in the book were taken with my vlogging camera, but I also did get a new camera which takes better pictures. And believe it or not, occasionally I actually took pictures with my smartphone, my, you know, my Apple phone. Um, it's amazing the quality of pictures. Obviously, at some point in the future when I write another book, and I can afford an even better camera, I'll do that. Or maybe have a professional photographer in the shoot as well. But I really believe, you know, use what you have. Um, it's amazing, you know, that what you have might actually be good enough. So usually after cooking or baking, um, I would alternate days where I would edit because I was also constantly trying to make sure I was still putting on content on YouTube. I would feel really bad if I went several days without putting up YouTube content, even though there were times where I was battling this idea that I couldn't seem to do both well enough, like I really wanted to finish this book. Um, and of course, I could have finished it sooner had I not tasked myself with you know this plan of making videos to go with the book or alongside the book for every recipe that was in the book if i was just writing i definitely could have finished the book sooner so anyway it it was definitely a challenge and i learned a lot a lot 
I must say I feel fortunate that I'm able to edit my own videos because it could have been very expensive for me to hire a videographer, especially when it came to this book. I actually did all the editing myself, which I always do anyway. So anyway, we are having a cake giveaway and it's super easy. All you have to do is subscribe, of course, like this video, comment below. And make sure you're following me on Instagram and comment with a cake emoji. So two winners, at least two winners will be selected Tuesday evening, this Tuesday evening. And I will send you a free cake along with maybe a surprise gift or two. You know me, it's not just going to be cake. <laughs> All right, y'all. You know me, Little Miss Extra. <laughs> I was about to change my hairstyle and I just thought I would share it with you because some of the benefits of doing your own hair, you can switch it up when you want to. You can literally switch it up in one minute, okay? So let me show you what I mean. You see the edges nicely laid. You see the hair nicely curled. All right, and I know what you're thinking. She's wearing a wig. Yes, I am wearing a wig. It doesn't look like it, but it's a wig. Wait till you see what's underneath, and it's not what you think. All right, oh, I got it, I got it. I got the combs in here. I got the combs in here. All right, so you're probably thinking, big deal, you've got a stocking on. But underneath the stocking is another hairstyle. <laughs> See a full hairstyle. Bam, she has braids. What y'all think? Is it a mess? I can't see. I don't think it's a mess. A brand new hairstyle.